Hello everyone and I would like to show you a very interactive chess problem by Josef Mihailovich Kirkeli, a Georgian chess problem composer. I think he was Soviet a Georgian chess problem composer. He was born in 1931 and he passed away in 1988. After composing more than 1500 chess problems, he made some very important contributions uh, as a chess problem composer. Uh, so this is his picture. Okay. So he composed this a uh, pretty interactive chess problem in 1947 and it is white to move and win. And can you see the winning move for white? What would you do in this position? Uh, So in this position, basically, you have to push one of these pawns, but which pawn to push? Uh, this is a very important key question in this position. Would you push the G pawn or the E pawn? Which pawn is winning? Actually, if you said I would push the E pawn, this is actually a losing move, because after bishop takes on E7, G7, of course, uh, and in this position, please note that uh, black can't go back uh, with the rook because of bishop takes on c7, forking the king and the rook. So rook to b2 is the move for black. And if capturing the rook, then bishop to f6, forking the king and the pawn. And black is surviving. And in this position, if moving the king, then simply going behind the pawn and black is easily defending and black is going to win. And in this position, after checking the king, king takes on b2, bishop to f6 and if interposing, then simply bishop takes on g7 and if bishop takes on g7, of course, you are not going to be able to checkmate the black king with the bishop. So this is losing, uh, this is uh, a draw. So e7 is not the winning move. g7 is the winning move. And can you see the big difference between e7 and g7? Okay, if bishop takes on g7, uh, basically in this position we are threatening to take the bishop or push the pawn and promote the queen. Again, black can never go back because of bishop takes on c7, forking the king and the rook. So bishop takes on g7 and then e7, rook to b2, king to d3 and then rook goes behind the pawn after checking the king but this is losing. Can you see why? Because of simply pinning and winning. After bishop to d2, this is pinning the rook and winning the chess game after unpinning, capturing the rook and then promoting the queen and white is easily winning. So if you have a decent enough positional understanding in this position, you already see that g7 is the correct move, not e7. But it could be tricky. It could be extremely tricky. So g7 was the move. Did you see g7 and did you see why g7 was better, uh, why it was winning instead of playing e7. So again, bishop takes e7, rook check, rook check, and in this position, of course, black wants to go behind the pawn, but this is going to fail because of pinning and winning. So capturing the rook and then promoting the queen. Very instructive, simple, but a very beautiful chess problem by Josef Mihailovich Kirkeli, uh, the Georgian chess problem composer who was born in 1931 and he passed away in 1988. Okay, so uh, I will try to show you one more chess problem by this fascinating chess problem composer who composed more than 1500 chess problems uh, as a chess problem composer and even chess problem composers uh, they have titles 
just like chess players, so he was basically a chess grandmaster as a problem composer. Uh, by the way, before signing out in this position, this is also losing the bishop, because if you move the king uh, to the right or to the left, let's say to the right, and then checking the king, forking the king and the bishop, and in this position, of course, uh, it is pretty obvious that white is winning easily, and if moving the king to here, then we have check, forking the king and the bishop, and black is going to lose the bishop uh, after promoting the queen, but it is pretty clear that white is winning easily after promoting the queen. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.